So when I first started off this channel again, one of my first videos that did pretty well was how to live stream FGC events. And I've always wanted to do a follow up to that video. And since it looks like it's gonna be a while till we have live events again, I thought I'd do a video about how to live stream online FGC events. So first of all, I wanna make some clarifications. So first, I understand that people probably don't have the money to dump into their setups, like a Team Spooky or Level Up or 10 -0. So this is gonna be based around basic one PC setups. Now, if you're looking into building a PC for live streaming events, you can click on the video above for some PC builds. And also, I recommend actually taking a look at the previous FGC setup video because a lot of things like capture cards, and splitters, all that really transfers over here if you're gonna be capturing from your console. And finally, make sure to take a look at the video I made about VIOP software and the different qualities of the calls, because what this video is going to focus on is basically bringing in remote casters and having the highest audio and video quality for them, and also making sure that they can spectate the matches or, or even the production with relatively minimal lag. So when it comes to bringing in the remote casters, there's basically an easy mode and a hard mode. So the easy mode is Discord. Now, if you watch that video that I made about services, Discord tends to give you the best audio quality and the most flexibility with setting up audio quality. Now, basically, you're going to set up a Discord server. You're not going to be doing this with private Discord calls because when you set up a Discord server, you can actually adjust the audio bit rate. So if you have the funds to buy Discord Nitro, you can actually boost the server and unlock up to 128 kbps audio bit rate, which is a lot better than the standard. And then when you set up the server, you're going to want to set up the server's region as close as possible to your commentator so there isn't too much delay or lag and this will improve stability. So the one really important thing that I recommend for this setup is having multiple monitors. And the reason for this is because when you set up the Discord call, that means you're gonna set up the voice server, start the video call in there, get all the casters or commentators in there. And then you're gonna wanna basically have this video call window full screened onto its own monitor. And the reason for this is one, Basically, when you do the window capture on these different video feeds, you get the highest resolution possible. And two, if someone like drops out of the call, basically, since the position is always the same, when they hop back in, they'll get their video feed right away rather than having to, you know, re-screen capture and reposition it. it makes it a lot easier to manage. So what's the hard way of doing this, you might ask? Well, the hard way is basically using OBS Ninja. So OBS Ninja is basically this open sourced WebRTC based calling solution. So you don't need to install anything. You just go to the website, OBS Ninja. You're going to create a group room, make sure to set a password for the room and then set the video feed to director only. This will help with bandwidth and stability later. And then inside the settings, make sure on the guest call settings to enable pro audio and the high FPS, high bit rate mode. You can see those options here. Now you're going to want to take the links here from OBS Ninja and give it to your remote commentators. And basically they're going to load this web page in their browser. It'll set their camera and their microphone. And then you'll see them pop in on the guest room overview. And then there's solo guest links that you can basically take and add to XSplit or OBS as web page sources. Now, when you do this, make sure that the source keeps loaded because otherwise every time you switch scenes, it'll reload the video feed. So make sure you enable that so that it stays locked. And that's pretty much it for adding in the different feeds. It's a little bit easier to manage because they're their own independent feeds. Now there's a ton of extra custom parameters built into OBS Ninja. You can enable equalizers, increase the video bit rate, do all this crazy stuff. Let me know if you want me to do a video that takes a deep dive on these settings and explains them, but pretty much you can customize it to your liking. Now it takes a little more effort to set up, but I mean, not really. It depends how tech savvy your commentators are, but on your end, the amount of flexibility and control you have over your video feeds, I think makes it more than worth it to try this method. All right, post-production offcast here to say that if you're gonna be using OBS Ninja, I highly recommend that your two casters are in the same country or relatively close to each other. Once you go cross country or say from West Coast to East Coast, maybe make sure you're in the middle because it gets a real spotty the further the distances are. And no matter how much you lower the bit rate or change things around, it just doesn't work out too well uh, when people are far apart. So fair warning with OBS Ninja, if your commentators are going to be in different countries or further apart, I would recommend Discord and just make sure to, you know, change the country or the region based on what's kind of closest between everyone. So the next part is setting up how your casters will spectate the action and know what's going on on stream. So for actually spectating the gameplay, 
if the game allows it, I recommend they actually just join the lobby of the match. So most of the modern fighting games will let you join this match lobby and skip your queue. And then they can just spectate the match this way. This will give the least latency or delay. Now, you probably also want them to make sure that they window this gameplay feed, especially if they're spectating on the same PC. So make it windowed so that they can also have another window open to see what's actually going on on the stream. So this is going to be a feed to see like notes or ad reads or just know if they're on camera or not. So you're probably wondering, how are you going to actually display what's going out to the stream to the commentators so they can know if they're on camera or not? So you're actually going to use the virtual camera functionality in both OBS and XSplit. So in Discord or OBS Ninja, for the camera source, you can select the virtual camera output. Now this outputs whatever is live on the stream, but XSplit actually has an advantage here. So XSplit can actually choose what scene to output to its virtual camera. So you can set up this cool preview scene that has like all your camera sources and then whatever is the live scene. And you can add like a notepad here to give notes to the commentators. Now, of course, you can use chat because everyone's at home, but it's a pretty cool advantage. The one thing though, is that if you have a commentator that doesn't have a console or can't spectate directly from the game lobby, you can use this as a way to, you know, spectate and cast, but I wouldn't recommend it because there's this like weird variable delay depending on their connection. So they might get things a bit later than the other caster if they're remote. So they might talk over each other. So if you have to use it, but I wouldn't recommend it. So for audio setup, you're probably going to want to be able to adjust the levels of your commentators. So in Discord, this is super easy. You just select the output device in Discord. This could be like the headphone port in your PC. Send it to your mixer, adjust the levels from there, and then, you know, send it as a line input in your streaming software. Now for OBS Ninja, it can be a bit more tricky. So in XSplit, when XSplit gets a website with audio, it outputs it through the system sound. So again, you know, headphones output into your mixer. But on OBS, what you'll have to use is the audio monitor. So when you right click on a source, you can go into advanced audio properties, and then you could select the output of the source. So you can say you want it to go to monitor only. And then in the settings, in the audio section, you can select your audio monitor. This is basically a separate output that, you know, doesn't go to the stream if you don't want it to. And you can set this again to like a headphones port, send it to the mixer, and then you can adjust the audio levels. But again, you can also do this all within the software as well. So you can actually adjust using the levels within OBS, you know, watch the meters and adjust, you know, the levels based on the caster's web page that you loaded, or even in Discord, you can adjust the individual levels of the callers. So the next thing you'll probably want to be able to do is to be able to talk to your commentators without it going to the stream to give them cues and stuff. So if you have like an extra headset or something lying around or basically just an extra microphone input, you connect this and then you make sure it's not added to OBS or XSplit. And then you set that as your input in Discord or in OBS Ninja. And that way you can talk directly to your commentators. Now, make sure that this isn't active or open at all the time because if there's noise in the background, it can be really distracting to your commentators. Now, if you want to manage everything with the mixer, you can actually do this using auxiliary outputs or submixes from your mixer. Now, there's way too many different mixers and they all label things differently. But basically, you want to create a submix that maybe just has maybe just gameplay audio or just has, you know, your microphone audio. And this outputs to a microphone input on your PC separate from the main input that's capturing like the main audio. And then set this as your microphone input in Discord or OBS Ninja and then they can get this special mix that's just for the commentators. All right, so the fun part, what can go wrong and how do you fix it? So I think the biggest issue is always like a feedback loop or an echo or something like this. So this can happen for a couple different reasons and there's some things you should check. So if there's like an echo or people can hear doubles of themselves, the first thing you wanna check is make sure that whatever is the main microphone input for XSplit or OBS, this is the main input that's sending audio to the stream, Make sure this is not the same microphone input that you have set in Discord or OBS Ninja because that should be a separate one if you're doing some type of talkback functionality. Another thing is that if you're using a mixer, make sure your submix is set up correctly. So like in Discord, you can actually use the test mic feature. And then when you test your mic, you should really only hear your own voice. Maybe some, you know, gameplay sound depends on how you're routing things, but really you should only hear your voice and the commentators should not be hearing their voice going back into them through that mix. Also, I, I recommend listening to your mix with headphones. Don't use like audio monitors or speakers because this could basically feed back into your talkback mic, creating another echo loop. Now, what about lag? Now, lag can rear its head in many ways. Like you might notice that the commentators are 
more and more delayed or out of sync to each other or they're starting to stutter on their video feeds. So there's a couple ways to resolve this. Now I recommend always setting up breaks maybe like an hour or two in between matches because you can basically refresh Discord or refresh the browser feeds, have your commentators reconnect. Now in Discord, it's pretty easy. You just hit Control R, everything reconnects, it's fine. In OBS Ninja, them reconnecting might create new URLs. So make sure to update the URLs in your browser source before bringing them back in and verifying everything's okay. And also tell your commentators, you know, don't be on Wi-Fi, be on a wired connection, and don't have any torrents or downloads running, you know, restart their modem, restart their router. We all know about that poverty FGC internet. So that should give you some basic fundamentals for hosting online FGC broadcasts and bringing in remote commentators. Now this is by no means a comprehensive guide. You should still go in and test and tweak. Everyone's setup is different. But let me know if you have any questions in the comments and what fighting games are you planning to stream this year? Are there any online events that you're excited for? Let me know, give a like if this is helpful and share it around as well. Be sure to subscribe and catch you on the next one.